In this video, we're going to look at area and sector area of a circle. And so that is our objective, to be able to calculate the sector area of a circle. And so the first thing we do is we need to recall the equation for area of a circle. That's going to be pi r squared. Now, I don't think we're going to have time to do it in this video. I think this video is going to be lengthy as it is. But this URL, if you type that into your address bar and go to it, it has a great representation of why the area of a circle is pi r squared. So I would encourage if you're ever wondering why that's the case, oops, if you're ever wondering why that's the case, go to this URL and play around with it for a little bit, and I think it will shed some light on it. Now, just to kind of check our background knowledge, finding the area of a circle and leaving our area in, or our answer in terms of pi, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. Well, in this case, our radius is going to be 9 meters. So our area is going to be pi times 9 squared, and then 9 squared is just 9 times 9, which is 81 pi. So I could leave my answer in terms of pi just by not multiplying 81 times pi and just leaving it as 81. But if you wanted to get the decimal approximation, you could just punch that into a calculator. So that's kind of your background knowledge, finding area of a circle. That's kind of something we're going to need to know to uh, know what we're, where we're going today. And so next, before we get any further, I also want to compare and contrast the arc length and sector area of a circle. Arc length we covered in a previous video. That's how long this little stretch is right here, measured in feet or inches or yards, okay? The area of a sector is how, actually I think I have it right here. The area of a sector is in square, the area in square units of an individual sector, okay? So if you're thinking arc length, we're thinking about this, how long this blue line is or this blue arc is, for things sector area, we're thinking how many little squares does it take to cover this slice of the pie? And that's where we're going in this video. So on the next three slides, I'm going to try to build some conceptual understanding of uh, why our formula is the way it is. Feel free to skip ahead if you don't want to know that and you just want to know the formula. But um, let's say we've got our circular garden and it's divided into 84 parts. Each of these parts is called a sector. Okay. And so what fraction of the circle is each one of these? Well, there's 84 parts. So each part is one eighth of the whole circle. And so then if I ask you to find the measure of one central angle, the central angle is this guy right here. Okay. And you might be saying, okay, well, I don't know what this angle is, but I know that there's eight equal central angles that make up this whole circle. And if I were to add this angle plus this angle plus this angle plus this angle and add them all up, they would total 360. So the angle that we're looking for is one eighth of 360, or in other words, 45 degrees. That little central angle right there that we're talking about is 45 degrees. And so we want to write a fraction equivalent to our fraction here, but we want to write it in terms of the central angle. So I want to take this 45 degrees and I want to represent 1 8 using a 45. And so the idea here is that one part out of 8, one sector out of 8 total sectors, is going to be equal to 45 degrees out of a total of 360. So this is kind of a ratio that we're going to use as we continue to develop our formulas. So I kind of copied it over right here. This is the question from the previous slide. And now what we want to do is we want to determine the area of the entire garden. So if I wanted the area of the whole thing, we've kind of already practiced this, but we know that our area is going to be pi r squared, or in other words, pi times 5 squared, because our radius is 5, or in other words, that's going to be 25 pi, okay? We'll just leave it in terms of pi for now, but that's going to be the area of the garden, and I guess I should put my units. It's in square feet. Now, what we're going to do is I want to use the answer here from number 3 and the answer here in number 4 to find the area of one sector of the garden. So basically, if I wanted to know What's the area of just this little sector right here? Actually, I should shade that a little bit better. Just this one sector right here, how would I find its area? Well, we know the whole area is 25 pi, but we don't want the whole area. We just want 1 eighth of that area. This would give us the area of our sector. Now, instead of using the 1 over 8, Let's write it in terms of degrees, because if I know that angle, that central angle of 45 degrees, we know that's going to be our equivalent fraction. So this is the portion we want of the entire area, okay? 
So if I multiply that fraction times the whole area, that would give us our answer. I think I have it on the next slide. Oh, I got it right there. But that ends up, if I, if I do those button pushes, you get 3.125 pi or roughly 9.817 square feet. Now, let's write an equation and a proportion. We're gonna have two different ways of solving these problems, okay? And we can derive the equation from this process that we just did right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this right here and generalize it. So it says that would allow us to find the area of a sector with a central angle of N. So in the example we did, our central angle was 45, but this is saying, what if our central angle was N? It's always gonna be out of 360, because that's a full revolution. And then we're gonna multiply that times our area, which is pi r squared. We did, it was pi times five squared for the previous problem, but our radius could be anything. So this is gonna be like our general equation right here. We're gonna use this, write this down, take notes. If you're more of a proportion person, okay, what we can do is I can take this and divide both sides of the equation by pi r squared. And what you're gonna end up with this, you're gonna end up with the area of the sector over pi r squared, and that's gonna be equal to the central angle or the arc measure over 360. So this is a good proportion as well. It doesn't matter if you use this equation to find your answer or this proportion to find your answer. It really just depends on what you prefer. So on the following slides, I'm gonna work them all out using both strategies, but feel free to skip through the part that you don't like. Now, in this problem it says, what's the measure of arc AB? Well, looks like I forgot to label it, so A, B, and its measure is just gonna be 45 degrees. It's gonna be the same as the measure of the central angle. So the measure, that's the easy part, but we wanna find the area of the sector. In other words, what's the area of this whole thing right here? So if we wanted to use the equation, sorry, let me copy down what I just erased, 45 degrees. So if we wanted to find the area, we could use our equation, which would be 45 degrees out of 360 times pi, sorry, trying to be color coded, pi r squared. Our radius is eight, the central angle is 45, so I substitute the central angle in for n, the eight in for the radius, and here's what we got. From here, we're just doing a bunch of calculator button pushes. And by doing that, you should get eight pi, um, what are we in, centimeters squared? I'll just leave my answer in terms of pi for now. If you wanted the decimal approximation, you could just punch eight pi into your calculator. And so, let's do the same thing over here with the proportion. Now, I've, I've labeled it as x, but that's the area of our sector right there. Um, and let's just fill in what we know. We don't know the area of the sector, that's what we're trying to figure out, but we know pi r squared, that's just the area of our circle. And that's equal to a 45 degree angle out of 360, okay? I'll do one step of simplification, we, or a couple steps. We have 64 pi, because eight squared is 64. 45 over 360 is 1 eighth, if I did just want to simplify that fraction. And you can solve this proportion however you want. I'll just solve with cross multiplication. Eight times X is equal to 64 times pi. And after you do your dividing to solve for X, you end up with X equals eight pi. Oops, and don't forget your, your units, square centimeters. So you need to use the equation or the proportion. Let's do another one. Now in this problem, we're doing the same thing, but we got a big sector here, okay? We have a sector, the central angle is 260. It's got it labeled on the outside for the arc, but that's 260 degrees and a radius of six. So, so let's just jump right into it. I, I would encourage you to pause the video and try to answer this one on your own and then hit play whenever you're ready to check your answer. But what we got is, is we don't know the area of the sector, but we do know that our angle in question is 260 degrees out of a possible full 360. And then we're multiplying that by pi r squared. And if I do just a little bit of simplification, actually, I don't want to simplify. I'm just going to multiply 260 over 360 times 6 squared, and then I'll just leave it in terms of pi. So I'll write what I get right here and leave it in terms of pi. And I got 26 pi, and we're not given units, so we're going to just say square units. So the area of this big old shaded region is 26 pi squared square units. 
Now let's just make sure we get the same answer with our proportion. So my first step is I'm just going to substitute in what I know. We know we have 260 degrees out of a possible 360. And that's going to be equal to the area of the sector which we don't know over the area of the full circle which we do know. And so simplify, our denominator there is going to be 36 pi because 6 squared is 36 and then 26 over 36. And that's going to give us 13 over 18, which I don't know if that really helps us a ton to simplify that fraction into 13 over 18, but oh well. And then I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to do 18 times x, which gives us 18x. And then I'm going to do 13 times 36 pi. And that's going to give me 468 pi. And then my last step to solve for x is going to be to divide by 18 on each side of this equation. And I'm not even going to punch that in the calculator because I'm going to be confident that 468 divided by 18 gives us that same 26 that we got from the previous question. And then I'm going to label it as square units because we are talking about area. And there you go. We've got one last example and then we're done. Okay. On this last example, um, once again, I'd encourage you to pause the video, try this on your own and see how you do. But on this last one, they're giving us the area of the sector. They're saying the area of the sector is 37.5 pi. And they're giving us the central angle, but they don't tell us what the radius is. So on this one, we're going to have to fill in what we know and solve for our unknowns. So as I jump into it, on this first one, I'll work through the equation first. You can work through whatever strategy you want. But the area of the sector is 37.5 pi. That was given to us. And we were also given that the central angle is 150 degrees out of a possible 360. But what we don't know is the radius. So what we're going to have to do is we're, we're just going to have to solve. And so um, you could go a bunch of different routes here to solve first. How about we first just divide by pi and get our pi's out of there because there's a pi on each side of the equation. Then I have 37.5 equals 150 over 360 times pi r squared. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 360 on each side. So I guess I can show that. If I multiply by 360 on the right side, it will... Uh, kind of divide to 1, and I'm going to do the same thing on the left side. And what we end up with is 13,500 equals 150 r squared. Oops, I forgot I'd already canceled out that pi. Let me get rid of it. And then lastly, or not lastly, but next, let's divide by 150 on each side. And we have r squared equals 90. And then we got to solve that by taking the square root of each side, and we get that r equals the root of 90. That's the radius. Now, uh, you could punch that in the calculator and get a decimal approximation. I could also simplify the radical, which I'm not going to go through the steps of right now, but just know that that's going to be three roots of 10. But basically, that's going to be your radius in this problem. So we filled in what we knew and solved for the radius. Let's do the same thing over here, okay? Um, we have our, our sector area, so I'll fill that in there. That's going to be 37.5 pi. And that's over pi r squared. Remember, the r is what we don't know. It's what we're trying to find. And that's going to be equal to our central angle of 150 degrees over 360. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out the pi's because anything over itself is 1. And then 150 over 360 simplifies to 5 twelfths. From there, to solve this, I just like cross-multiplying. So r squared times 5 is going to be 5r squared, and then 12 times 37.5 is going to be 450. We divide by 5 on each side, we get that r squared equals 90, and then we're going to take the square root of each side and get that r equals the root of 90. Um, if this was Algebra 1 and we were doing a problem without context, we'd say plus or minus the root of 90, but uh, we can't have a, a, a radius that's a negative length, so we can just disregard the negative there. So if r equals the root of 90, that means r could be equal to 3 roots of 10. And do we have units in this problem? Looks like we didn't really have units, so um, I would just label your radius as that many units.